authentic business adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphs and successes of business owners across the land. We are locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. Downloadable audio episodes can be found at the podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. And today we are welcoming slash preparing to learn from Glenna Shanahan, and this is interesting here, world-class bridge player. That's <laughs> what it says here, and the owner of the Bridge Club of Madison. And before uh, Glenna gets talking here, I just want to point out, we are in a building that has a bunch of tables for people to learn how to play bridge and to actually play bridge, which I had no idea that existed. Really? I had no idea. No idea. Cool. When, I, when I had the address and I'm driving up here, I didn't know what to expect. It was just a back room somewhere, but this is a building. Standalone only thing. So if you're into bridge, great. If you're not quite into bridge, you will be soon. So <laughs> Glenna, how are you doing today? Great, thank you. And you? I'm doing very well. I'm excited. Because too. Yeah, for a couple reasons. One, I've heard people talk about bridge, but I guess I have never played bridge. So I'm probably one of the people that you're like, well, come on in and prepare to be a student here. I would like that. <laughs> I like you students. Yeah, right? How long have you had this? We've had, well, we, three of us bought it 29 years ago. Okay, 29. Holy 30. Cow. It'll be 30 in a couple of months. Wow. Um, we ran it for 20 some years, but one of the partners had cancer and needed to get out of the business. So, oh, no. so I took it over because bridge is, is really my passion. All right. How did you get into bridge? Well, that's not a very interesting story, but well. okay, sure. <laughs> I used to play tennis and golf, if I could, five days a week. All right. But my third pregnancy was very toxic, and mm. I had to give that up. And I was lamenting how lonely and bored I was going to be. And a girlfriend said, oh, come to my house, and I'll teach you to play bridge. And I said, a card game? Yeah. And she said, yeah, you might like it. I said, I don't think so. She said, just, just come try it. So we went over and sat in her kitchen, and she taught us how to play bridge. And as soon as the baby was born, I was back playing tennis and golf. But then a girl I really liked and respected called me up and said, Glenna, I'd really like you to learn to play bridge and become my bridge partner. And I was so flattered that she would ask. Huh. I called up a bridge teacher, and she said, well, if you can find me eight people, I'll teach a class. Well, I found her 24. 24 people? <laughs> Holy cow. And it was really interesting. She said to me one day, I kind of feel sorry for you, Glenna, because you're going to become addicted to the game. And I said, oh, no, never. <laughs> and I did. Here we are. Here we are. Dang. All right. So, so toxic pregnancy led to all this. Yes. You never know what's going to be good, right? Well, for many years, I did all three things. Wow. All I was, right. I was busy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but never bored, right? <laughs> right. All right. So what do we have on the table here? Well, I'd like to explain how this card game is different than most others. Yeah. Most please. other card games, you're playing with your friends, and it's three or four people sitting around the table. I guess in some card games, there's seven or eight. Like, sure. we play hearts, we have a whole crowd. Mm -hmm. But in bridge, there's four people at a table, and you come to bridge with a partner, and it's not by name. It's all by compass. North, south are partners, and east, west are partners. All right. And we have like 17 vocabulary words. Uh, we have four numbers, or seven numbers, and four suits if you're playing in a suit contract and if you're playing in no trump. So I need to explain the difference in yeah. those two, if you don't mind. No, you spoke um, a different language to me just there. <laughs> oh, bridge is like a foreign language. All That's right. the first thing people should know. Okay. Uh, all the games we played today basically stem from China 2,000 years ago. Okay. And they didn't have cards, but they used coins and metal and bones and sticks and whatever. Mm -hmm. And in the ninth century, in the Tang Dynasty, they, they actually played a game similar to what we play today. And in the 1350s, the Egyptian vagabonds took it to England. And that's right. why the names of some of these things are European names. Mm -hmm. So it, it really takes a few weeks for people to get comfortable enough. Oh. And when I teach bridge, I tell them that it's like peeling an onion to learn to play bridge. Your mind can only absorb so many new things at a given time. All right. So what I do is the first week, introduce the game and all the mechanics of it. 
bidding boxes, boards, table guide cards, and explain to them what these are used for. And then the next week, we tackle no trump. And no trump means that if you're playing, the highest card played on the table wins the trick. And if you win that trick, you lead to the next trick. And so there's there's no trumping. It's just sometimes the two of clubs take a trick. And in social bridge, they'll often have a prize for whoever takes a trick that they, the two of clubs. Oh, it's, funny. A, it's the lowest card in the deck. All right. But then in suit contracts, when you run out of a suit, and if you have trump, you can win the trick by playing a trump. And All right. So that's the difference between no trump and suit. Gotcha. Um, and on boards, we play boards. This is a duplicate board. Yeah. And I teach with duplicate boards because all it is is a means for me to carry hands around that different tables can play the same hands. So all it's right. a means of communication. Oh, gotcha. So I suppose it's easier to teach instead of just the students end up with random cards and you have to... Right. I, for a two-hour class, the first hour I introduce the topic. Mm -hmm. We go through some exercises so they see it, and in the last hour, we actually play four hands that deal just with the topic that we've learned. All right. And so what I tell people, it's kind of hard to ask them to trust me at week one because they don't know me and don't know anything about me. <laughs> All right. But learning to play bridge is like planning a European vacation because it takes months to put it all together. Mm -hmm. That's one aspect. The second aspect is the doing of it, and the third aspect is coming home and enjoying it and rethinking about it. Well, bridge is sort of the same way. The first four weeks, you just have to take me at face value mm -hmm. and learn what I ask you to learn. And then, at the end, we put it together. So there's three aspects to learning bridge. There's the bidding, the play of the hand, and then the defense of the hand. Oh, okay. It's so, defense. Okay. And they're all simple. They are very simple to learn. But the problem becomes <laughs> that you have to have a partner. All right. And you and your partner have to have the same thought process uh, and the same skill level. Okay. And then you enter in with two opponents, mm -hmm. and they're trying to do you in. Mm -hmm. So putting it all together and dealing with three other people is difficult. All right. So is there no table talk? So you uh, can't between really... hands you can talk. Okay. But if you and I were playing bridge and I wanted to open the bidding, I would reach in the spinning box, put my thumb on what I want, my fingers at the back, and I pull it out and I put it like this so the whole table can see it. Oh, gotcha. So there's no asking. So there's the no like, hey, how many spades you got? Right. Okay. None of that. All right. And so we do that, and I people say that we're too serious at bridge. <laughs> They do. All right. And I have to tell you, there are days that we laugh and have such a good time. I bet. But we are serious when we're playing the hand. Sure. Okay. But let's say we have three boards per round. Mm -hmm. You and your partner come here and we play our three boards. And when that's over, we start chatting. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about the hands we played or what you did last night or what you're going to go do. Yeah, whatever. It's very social. Mm -hmm. So that's, and then when the time is called, I have a timer in the corner that gives people an idea of how much time they have left and if they need to hurry up or slow down or whatever. <laughs> All right. But it, it's just something that helps them keep going just at the right pace. Okay. Because it is a timed game. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. How long do you get per, per board. hand or board? Okay. Well, hand. We have to talk about hand. All right. Seven minutes. Seven so minutes. So okay. you're playing three boards, mm -hmm. you can sit here at my table for 21 minutes. All right. And when the time is up, I take these boards to a different table and get new boards, and you go to the next table and play those people. And the reason duplicate oh. is the most popular for a bridge is because you take these boards and the whole room plays them. I'll put out 27 boards and we play all of them. Mm -hmm. Well, when you have that many people playing the same hands, you've taken out an element of luck. Mm -hmm. There's still a little luck involved, but not like regular card games. All right. Interesting. There's some skills, so the people that are better at the game will advance. Yes. All right. Yes, they win master points, and that's what that board back there says for life masters. And then there's on the right side it says on the path. Um, All right. These these first columns are people who are life masters, and then you're, they became life masters. It takes 500 points today to become a life master, and then. Is, on are the, those decades? Big pardon. Those are decades? Mm -hmm. So you have people from the 1960s? Uh, he started playing, he was a 
chemistry professor at the UW. All right. And he started playing, and his wife is down there just a few beneath him. They've been playing together since 1967 or something. Wow. And they have 14,000 master points each. He's close to 15,000. How do they keep track of that? Well, we have a home office. It's called American Contract Bridgely, and it's in Memphis. And we pay them, as a club owner, I pay them to have games. They're called yeah. sanctions. Okay. And then I pay them so much per game, and then I pay them so much per table. Wow. Okay. And in return for that, they keep track of everyone's master points and the pigments. Um, to become a life master, you have to have certain colors of points. Colors of points. Mm -hmm. All right. We have black points, which you win at club games. We have red points, which you can win at club games. Our sectionals. You have silver points that you win only at sectionals. You have gold points that you win at, at nationals and at regionals. And then you have platinum points that you can only win at the nationals. Wow. We have four national tournaments a year. No, that's not right. We have three. Three in the country. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. For instance, we just had one last month in Providence, Rhode Island. All right. In November, it'll be in Phoenix. And next March, it'll be in New Orleans. And All next right. summer, it'll be in Chicago. So it's a different talent every time? Mm -hmm. All right. We have the, had them in Canada, at both Toronto and Vancouver and Montreal. All right. So do they just set up? Hundreds of tables and hundreds, people, hundreds. people play bridge till they can't hold cards anymore. Or? Oh, what, when I, I was young, when we first started, they would sometimes have three sessions a day, and we'd all play three sessions a day. Wow! All right, it is, is it is addicting. Huh? I had no idea. <laughs> it's so interesting how there's a national organization for anything, mm -hmm. anything bridge. I mean. Yeah, plastic plants, anything. Well, the thing about bridge is that it, you can play it however you want. You could have three buddies over and sit and have beers and play bridge. Mm -hmm. You could invite three other couples over and have dinner and then have a bridge party. You could come here and play competitive bridge. All right. And the reason we get addicted to competitive bridge, I think, is that, first of all, it's, it's social because mm -hmm. we're here having a good time and yeah. eating and drinking. Name of the game. But it's also problem solving. It's each individual hand is like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to figure out who has the ace of diamonds and well, if he has the ace of diamonds, he must have the queen of clubs, that kind of thing. And so after playing 27 or 28 boards, I am actually mentally tired. Because right. <laughs> I'm keeping track of all those things yeah. and thinking about things. I bet. But our vocabulary words, are, can we talk about that for Yeah, by all means, by all means. Right. This is called a hand. 13 okay. cards is my hand, and you have a hand. All right. But what's confusing, at the end, we've played this, and we say, oh, on hand one, mm -hmm. the whole board is a hand. Oh. So our vocabulary words are sometimes unusual. We have things like uh, Stamen and Jacoby transfers. Those were named after the people who first invented them. All right. We have something called Casino Count, which was invented by a Hungarian. Casino Count. Yeah. All right. So it, it's kind of interesting. Just learn all of this stuff. Yeah, there's a lot going on. It is. It's uh -huh. very challenging mentally, I think. So when people play bridge at home, are they using this plastic no. thing, or no. okay, they're just dealing cards? So this is just to help organize. It's, it's to organize and it's to allow us to compare scores on the same hands. All right. So let's say you and I bid to a, a game contract of four hearts mm -hmm. and we don't get a very good board. We can look at it after the game. It's online. It's posted. It's called ACBO Live. So Holy cow. You see, well, we have a dealing machine. So All right. We make up hands, put them in a dealing machine. They make the boards for us. We play them, and then that hand record goes out online. And we played four hearts, and we didn't get a very good score. Well, why not? Well, we can look at it. Unfortunately, we got the best lead in the room for them. Mm. So other people made five, and we only made four. All right. So you are able, it's almost like self-education, because you can see what you might have done better mm -hmm. or what you didn't think to do at the time. So I think I have people here who, in my opinion, have more fun going home and going over the boards than they actually do in playing them. Really? Okay. They're trying to figure out how to get better. All right. 
coaching themselves, kind of looking at past plays, so to speak. Mm -hmm. All right, interesting. So the the shuffle machine, dealing machine, loads these things. Yeah. Wow. And that's online. The results are online. The results are online. Okay. With a copy of the hand, it's called the PBN file. Okay. And we put that. I. Want to see the dealing machine? I can get sure. it. Sure. Yeah. Like, All right. Let me show you. All right. This is the dealing machine. Whoa, look at that. I put my flash drive right here. All right. I turn it on. I click it to I'm on the date that I have prepared. Mm -hmm. Then I can't really put all these in. I'll put these in because these are already made up for my game Friday. Okay. But you put in a deck of cards. Right over here. Then another deck of cards, and you turn it on, and you ins this opens, and you insert it in here. Push the button, and the cards are dealt into these boards. So this machine keeps track of what cards are going in what pile. Wow. So then, when you go online later, you can see what each, each, each hand. hand was. Uh -huh. Wow. And you see what everybody bid. Oh, okay. Like, how come we got a top board? Well, we did three no Trump instead of three clubs. All right. So it's really a nice way to keep track of your Holy cow. of your experience. Yeah. So do you tell the machine, hey, I'm teaching these people, so deal these things? I can hands? do that. Okay. I bought another program called Deal Master Pro. All right. And let's say I wanted to teach you no Trump. Mm -hmm. I go into Deal Master Pro and I download eight hands. And I print them out for you, and I say, we're going to play these eight hands, and we do. All right. And then you have a record of them to see, oh, that's what she meant. All yeah. right. Wow. Because, see, everybody learns differently. We have visual learners, audio learners. Mm -hmm. I, I can only learn something if I write it down. Okay. Uh, so when I teach bridge, I try to teach it in those three manners so that no one is really left out. Got it. Covering all the bases. I try to. All right. That is crazy. So the cards that you use with this machine, are they specific to this machine, proprietary? No, I order them from, there's a, there's a huge company. All right. Called, I think the name of it, but that's Fair and Rich Products. All right. They sell cards and, and machines and all this internationally. So these are cards specifically for Bridge? Well, or you could use you them for You can use them for other games. games. Okay. I, don't, I don't play that many other games. All right. <laughs> There's no other game you need to know. <laughs> but I bought something like 60 decks of new cards when we came back from the pandemic. All right. I wanted new cards. Wow. That is cool. That is it's surreal because I see this must be a little camera there, so it's reading it the face it. of the card. And sometimes uh, a card will get stuck. Mm -hmm. And it'll flash up air and tell me what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Did it not read the card correctly? And so you can push cancel and see the hand All and right. put the card in the right place. Got it. I can now make a, I when I first started, it took me like 40 minutes to make a deck. I bet. Because we make 28 words for each game. Yeah. But now I'm down to like 18 minutes. All right. <laughs> so you get much faster at yeah. putting these things open and putting them in and being ready to go. Wow. That is slick. That's impressive. It really is. I mean, I think most of my people are baby boomers. Okay. Baby people. Um, it's kind of interesting. Not that many younger people play. I have an eighth grader. Oh, really? Whose mother drove him to Philadelphia so that he could play in the youth championship at the summer regional. Wow. National. And then I had two young men come here from Epic. Well, now they bring, there's seven of them who come. Oh, funny. So it's interesting how yeah. Bridge grows, I think, more by word of mouth than mm -hmm. anything. Somebody right. says, oh, did you see that? They have Bridge there. And mm -hmm. somebody pulled in one day and stopped me. I was pulling flowers in the garden. And she said, do you, do you ever play Euchre here? And I said, no, I'm sorry, it's just Bridge. <laughs> bridge. <laughs> yeah. Funny. That is cool. So when you first got into Bridge, mm -hmm. 
or I guess when you first got with your partners to start this, was there any other business that was doing this? Well, actually, the first duplicate in Madison was held out at the airport. In the World War II, the officers' wives mm -hmm. were lonely and bored. All right. So some of them knew how to play bridge, and they started a bridge game okay. at the airport. Wow. For the officers' wives. And then they, it wasn't big enough for them, so they started inviting other people that they might meet. All right. And so the bridge has been going on here since the 1940s. Holy cow. Now, in its heyday, yeah. uh, was actually bridge overall. Heyday was during the Depression because people didn't work, All right. didn't have jobs. Mm -hmm. They were going crazy. So, All right. <laughs> so a lot of people All right. learned to play bridge. Interesting. So when you went to, well, let me back up a step here. You get your business partners. How did you figure out what business partners you were going to have? Oh, that's easy. Uh, I was new to bridge, mm -hmm. and one of them was a life master already and very experienced. And I think the other one was also a life master, but probably not as experienced. We just had fun together. All right. And about 12 of us would go out after a bridge game at night, have a drink, and, mm -hmm. and our minds could recall all the hints. Wow. And we would sit around and we would say, oh, on board seven, what did they lead against you? Did they lead? And we would talk bridge. Holy hell. It, well, because, <laughs> all cool. right, before the cell phones, did you know like 30 phone numbers? No. Wait, yeah. Before and, cell phones, yeah, yeah. And now I have to look, I just speed dial my mm -hmm. kids because I can't even remember their phone numbers. Well, yeah. It's the same with bridge. All right. If you didn't have hand records and all this computer stuff, you would just remember the hands. Yeah. Anyway, the three of us enjoyed each other. One of them was in charge of the some program at the UWs. He was a department chair. The other one was just a handyman. And then I kind of like making things nice and just right. like colors. And, yeah. and so we were kicked out of a building and they we found a place to rent. And so the guy said to me, you pick out the paint and the carpeting, we'll do the work. Mm -hmm. And we worked well together. All right. So the next time we got kicked out of the building, I said to them, mm -hmm. Let's find a small building and just buy it. And they said, oh, you know, who, how would we do that? And I said, I don't know, we'll borrow money and buy it. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so they said, all right, find us one. So I got in a car and I drove around Madison for two weeks, I think. All right. And uh, we used to live in Arbor Hills. And I drove by here one day and it was for sale. And we had to put repair the back wall. It was a store that cleaned motors and engines. So the whole place was just filled oil and grease. Oh, sure. I had to have someone come in and clean all the vents. We scraped everything down. We repaired that wall and made it whole. And we bought it. In the first two or three years we owned it, we had to pay taxes out of our own pockets. Cause oh, not enough revenue coming in. All no, right. I mean, even though it's been 30 years almost, it's um, sure. it was still pricey back then. Because we used to charge $3 to play bridge. All right. It's <laughs> never been a big money. You need, all right. But anyway, that's that's how we moved in here and got it started. And then it, when we knew that we were tired of being kicked out, the three of us went together and bought it, paid taxes out of our own pocket. We all right. three ran bridge games here. Wow. So did you, were the three of you working in other day jobs? Well, I wasn't, but they both Okay. Were. All right. Gotcha. Just to be able to sustain this or keep mm -hmm. it rolling? All right. And then we hired other directors. Uh, we had one guy who directed on Wednesday night for like 15 years. Wow, that's he impressive. Here, he was here rain or shine. He never missed. Uh -huh. People are really loyal to Bridge. All right. Yeah. That's cool. It is. That's really cool. It's I call us a community. I would think so. Yeah, definitely. And that teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. It's perfect for me mm -hmm. because I could not possibly run this club and all the games and all the teaching and all the things that people do here. Mm -hmm. So everybody, I think, should always thank the director when they leave. The director yeah. is, sits at that desk, he's made the boards, he brings treats, he runs the game, he makes rulings at the table when there's an infraction. Uh -huh. And he sits there and works. He doesn't have any fun. We'd all rather be playing <laughs> all right. than directing. All right. But I have people who do things for me. Just, I mean, 
if I buy a trunk full of sodas and leave the trunk up, I've got three guys who are out there bringing that soda oh, really? before I get the car undone. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just, it's little things like that. It's a cool group. It is. So do you, do you have employees? Well, I don't call them employees. Okay, but they're, they're directors beyond just you? Yes. Okay. Oh, I have games here six days a week and, and still t three games online, so I can't... Like believe. how? That is a lot of bridge. <laughs> that is a lot of bridge. It is. It is. Wow. So have you found, I guess, what is the ideal time for bridge? Is it, is oh, it night? Oh, any time. Any time. <laughs> what a stupid question, James. Thanks. I mean, come on, Jim. Right? Oh, that's funny. We have to get you into bridge because you would be such a nice asset to this okay. club. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I've played cards before and I'm not the greatest, so. But you know what? I'm not a great card player. My friends invite me to poker just to take my money. So, <laughs> I think. I don't know. Well, I'll invite you to bridge like it's yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's totally fair. So, how do you get the word out? Because you said the, I guess just word of mouth is best, well, but it's got to start have, somewhere. I have to tell you, uh, my team, mm -hmm. I call us the Bridge Club of Madison's Better Bridge Team. All right. And I call us that because people with expertise in certain fields have contacted me. Mm -hmm. So about five years ago, this woman said, Glenna, I'm retired, and I think you need to have a website. So she did the website. Five years ago? Five or six years ago. That's, the internet's been around for a while, well, <laughs> even five years ago. So, but, yeah. but I didn't. Didn't need it. I, well, I didn't even know about it. I didn't think about it. All right. If you're not into techie things, and right. I'm not techie at all, mm -hmm. I never even. I just assumed people would know we were here. We had the sign out front. But anyway, she called and offered to do this. So she got together the website. Mm -hmm. Then she collected, I used to make individual little telephone books with people's name and phone numbers and addresses. So that oh, really? if it was your birthday, I could send you a card. All right. Well, she said, let's do that online. That way, when right. somebody moves, instead of the book being outdated the day it's printed, mm -hmm. we'll keep it up to date. All right. So she put all of us online. There's a place that you can go on our website to find, like, if you wanted a game with me, you could go look my phone number up and call me. All right. And she's kept that up to date. Wow. And then this, old, about three or four months ago, a woman contacted me and said, Glenna, I really, really like to do something nice for the Bridge Club because I'm so enjoying playing there. Mm -hmm. And she said, could I help with the website? And I said, well, Thank you, that's very nice of you, but Mary does that and I wouldn't want to step on her toes. And she said, well, I'll call Mary. All right. So she called me back and she said, we've worked it out. I'm going to help Mary, but I'm going to start a Facebook page for you. You really need a Facebook page. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> never had a Facebook page before either. Wow. <laughs> so it's things like that All right. that make me realize that it takes a whole village. The team to is getting it going. That is cool. That's what makes us function. Oh, huh, all right. So the tell me about the equipment because I see, I think that's a calculator. No, this it is, is not. Called, this is called a bridge me. All right. And if we were having a game, mm -hmm. I would set the game up on the computer. I would start these, and then I put one on each table, mm -hmm. and I put it by north. And it's north's responsibility to make sure that all the names are entered because once your name is entered. Each time you go to a table, it shows that you're there. All right. So that your opponents know who's coming. Oh. And, and then <laughs> when, the, when the hand has been played, like we played hand one, I would go here and go to board one, mm -hmm. and I would say what the contract was and which direction we played it, and then if they're successful or not. Oh. And that goes to the computer. All right. So those communicate to some big database. Yes. Somewhere, and then that. Can and then Go I can the, turn on this screen all right. near the end of the game, and when most of the boards have been posted, I can flash the results up on the screen, and they can see where they've come in. Uh -huh. And I always say, there's a late play, or there's two boards scored I'm going to fix. Mm -hmm. And they'll usually wait for me to correct it, because even though they'll have the results on their computer by the time they get home, mm -hmm. they still like to know while they're here. So they can, <laughs> So they can say to their partner, that was fun, or oh, yeah. wow, we did better than I thought we did, that kind of thing. Oh, very cool. It's camaraderie. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 we can get people together. Yeah. That is very cool. Yeah. Tell me about, so 29 years, almost 30 years, we had a pandemic recently. 
How did that change the nature of the game? Or the nature of just the business? Well, we closed. Closed up shop. Yeah. All right. We were closed for a year and a half, I think. Okay. Uh, what happened, it hit in late February mm -hmm. or early March. And the first thing I did was I had I knew for an air conditioner anyway, I made sure that I got a really super duper filter system on it. Okay. And I thought people would come back, but they, they didn't want to come back for a while. Mm -hmm. And even teaching, I had to teach on Zoom. Oh, that'd be tougher. Eh? Well, some classes you can teach on Zoom and kind of get away with it. Mm -hmm. But you cannot teach like brand new people something on Zoom. They have to have cards in their hands and mm -hmm. they have to have that. So I taught. But the thing about teaching on Zoom was I had 21 people from Vancouver in one class. Oh, wow. All right. And then I had... A Couldn't group, do that locally here? <laughs> no. And then I had... I taught at three different country clubs in California. I used to live in California six months a year in the winter. Oh, really? And I taught Smart. at three country clubs out there. So some of those people took Zoom classes from me. All right. And then I had a few Madison classes that I did on Zoom. All right. So do you still do those? Or is well, I let, I let my Zoom expire because I teach for Madison College, mm -hmm. Madison Schools and Recreation, and here. I just, I don't need to teach on Zoom to All right. Do you I, teach for Madison College? Mm -hmm. Like Madison College has a class on bridge? Yeah. Or class is? That no, is. I just have one a semester. Okay. Like, I, when we finish today, I'm stopping there because I, my fall class is starting soon and I need to know how many students I have. Oh, funny. So is that extra class or is adult it adult enrichment? Adult enrichment. Okay, I was I was just going to ask like, what are they are they going for a diploma in Bridge or no. something? Okay, that is pretty cool. But I suppose that teaching that class that's also a feeder for the business here, right? Well, it is. Like I just taught my class ended Thursday at Madison Public Schools, and we have a Bridge workshop here on Friday mornings for mm -hmm. people. I think five of them from that class came this past Friday oh, wow. morning. Oh, that's cool. And this morning, I got an email from somebody who knew one of those people and wanted to know if he could come to the class Friday. Oh, nice. So that's why I say word of mouth is right. a big part of this business. Yeah, that's cool. So the people that come here that attend, are they typically coming once a week, or are they coming more oh, than that? Very few people only come once a week. Or oh, they come more than that? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. We're talking two or three times, or? Uh -huh. Holy cow. I have a man who was here yesterday, he's not healthy at all, but he was telling me in his heyday he played here six days a week. Six days a week. Well, that's a healthy addiction. <laughs> that worked the brain. Well, it is good for the brain. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, you were telling me, I guess, before we started recording that like I like to play chess, and that chess and bridge are pretty similar in the, the mental... In the mental stimulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think the fact, too, I really do believe that we never know everything there is to know about Bridge. I yeah, that is interesting. Well, because uh, Bridge has changed in itself. Mm -hmm. it, people have changed, and you keeping up, you're constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So you just can't ever... Right. So you tell me the rules of the game or the, over the course of time, and I'm, I don't know when Bridge officially started. Was it hundreds of years ago or well, thousands, I guess, depending on how far In the 1350s, they okay. called it Whist. Whist, okay. And then it became Whist Bridge. All right. And now today, we have the game of Whist and we have Bridge. The two separate games. They're two separate games. So I used to teach a lot on cruise ships. And so one day I had 12 tables. And the people who had been there the day before weren't there. And I asked their friends where they were. And she said, oh, they decided they better support the whist game today. So I left the room and went down to the whist game. Mm -hmm. 22 tables. Oh. All right. Whist, um, it's kind of, I, I never played war, but I've heard whist is compared to war. Okay. But you're you're trying to take the tricks with a partner. All right. But it's, so it's similar-ish? Well, in the 1930s, Vanderbilt, I mean, the rich royal, of, you want to call them the royalty of the United States, mm -hmm. had a lot of spare time. Right. So they were very much into bridge. And Vanderbilt said at that time it was auction bridge. You just played bridge and did whatever. Vanderbilt said, let's make bridge more interesting. Let's have 
contract bridge. Right. So what contract bridge is that we are partners mm -hmm. and we bid together and we reach a contract of three no trump. Mm -hmm. Well, three no trump, first you have to have a book of six. All right. Then if we had three no trump, we have to take the book of six and then we have to take the three additional tricks. That's nine tricks and no trump. Mm -hmm. If we're successful, we not only get the score for that, but we get a bonus for being accurate. All right. But the next hand, we bid three no trump, I go down. Well, we don't get a bonus for that. Our opponents get the bonus. Oh, all right. So at the end of the day, you're comparing all of these scores, and you come up with who is first or second or third. Mm-hmm. All right. So let me think. You have, each person has 13 cards. Mm -hmm. So does that mean there's 13 plays in each mm -hmm. 13. Actually, they're called tricks. Tricks, OK. So when four cards are played, that's mm -hmm. one trick. Got it. OK. And the person who won the trick leads to the next trick. And it's essentially the highest card based Our on... Our trump. OK. And I'll show you this. You and I are playing bridge. Yeah. And if we win the trick, we put it down this way. All right. If they win the trick, it goes that way. All right. If they win that trick, then we win this trick, and then we win that trick. At the okay. end of 13 cards, mm -hmm. you can look down and say, oh, you made four. All right. Oh, you're down two. <laughs> because it's right here in front of you. All right. And then if we disagree, somebody will say, oh, go back to trick seven and see what was done. Mm -hmm. And so you'll go back and you'll see that somebody had accidentally turned their card the wrong direction or something. Cool. But they're curious about why it's not their trick. All right. <laughs> well, how fast is a, is a trick? Are we talking seconds? People lay their cards down no, and sway? No, let's say I lead mm -hmm. and you're the declarer. So mm -hmm. the person to the left of the declarer makes the opening lead. Mm -hmm. Let's say I leave this card and you, you're in a contract. When you see this lead, You've already looked at your dummy. Mm -hmm. The hand that goes down is called the dummy, but your partner also becomes the dummy. Okay. Another double meaning. Yeah. You will take a few minutes to analyze the bidding and the opening lead, mm -hmm. and you'll compare your hand with that hand and see how they fit together and where the strengths and weaknesses lie. All right. And then you'll call a card from dummy. Dummy cannot touch a card until you request it. Mm -hmm. And then that person follows, and then you decide to win it or not, either in dummy or in your hand. So each trick could take minutes? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? OK. I'm used to playing with um, fast fast older people that they're trying to teach me a game. And they're just like, ah, fast, hide card. And they're throwing cards so fast, but I don't know what just happened. I know I lost, but that's all I know. But see, you, as I said to you, part of the pleasure of bridge mm -hmm. is that it's problem solving. All right. So your brain won't go that fast. You mm -hmm. have to think through things. Okay. Like why would I lead this card? I wouldn't just pick a card up and lead it. Sure. I have to have a reason for it. All right. And so you're trying to figure out my thought process, mm -hmm. which good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> my partners can't even figure out. All right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is cool. So how has the business itself changed over the past almost 30 years? You're in the same building. The same building. Um, our night games, we used to have games on Monday and Wednesday nights, mm -hmm. and on Saturday nights wow. and Sunday afternoons, because people who worked needed those games. Mm -hmm. Now our population has aged, and we have maybe 10 people besides the young guys from Epic, maybe 10 people who still work. Okay. So it's changed our night games that I put them online because nobody wants to get in their car right. and drive out in the rain or the snow or the freezing cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, last night we had only five tables, but sometimes we'll have six or seven tables and sometimes okay. we'll have only three tables. It just, it, All right. You just never know who's going to show up to play. And when you say six or seven tables, you mean four people at a table? Yes. So it's still a healthy amount of people. Oh, it is. All right. It is. I it's mean, five as, tables, you get 20. It's still not as big, though, as it used to be. Sure. OK. And, and virtual games weren't popular back then. Right. I mean, there was, um, it's called Bridge Base Online. Mm -hmm. And the man started it in, I think, 2004, because I remember it was a big deal when it came out. But during the pandemic, this sounds impossible. 
but it's worldwide. You would click on because you wanted to go play, mm -hmm. and it would say 52,000 people are now playing bridge online. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. and at I, that moment. At that, at that time. And at 1 o'clock in the morning, they have games, but there aren't that many people on there. I've never been on it at 1 sure. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Can't sleep with bridge. <laughs> but it, I just loved it. A lot right. of people said they hated it because there was cheating that was going on. And online? It was boring. Oh, people cheat. How do you cheat online? Because you're essentially uh, fighting against the computer or with the computer. But if you're married, your spouse is in the other room. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. So there, there was cheating, and they said it wasn't social enough. But what I found was that I loved playing against people from India, Egypt. Lots of people played from England, Bermuda. I mean, one day I was playing, and I don't even know how it happened, but for some reason, the name just hit me is a, like a bell. Mm -hmm. And I asked the young man where he was from, and he said, Azerbaijan. And I said, oh, I was there 11 months ago, and oh, I funny. loved your country. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He started writing me all these, you can chat. Right? Yeah. I mean, he said, what is your ethnic background? Where do you live? What do you do? <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> so we became friends, sort of, all right. online. And who would ever think that could happen? Yeah, that's cool. So now in our online games, we have people play from Milwaukee. We have two guys who play every week from lacrosse. Wow. We have people who live in Florida in the winter, and some of them have stayed down there. They join us sometimes. All right. I have a father who lives in, um, oh, Beaver Dam. Okay. And his son is a physician in California. They get together online and play oh, once a week. Okay. I mean, these are things you wouldn't be able yeah. to do in the past. That's cool. So I guess even bad things have good things come out. Typically, that's how they work, yeah. Yeah. I think Warren Buffett's a big bridge guy, isn't he? Is. He is. I played against him. Have you really? Oh, he was How'd good. you do? Oh, oh, we won. Okay. <laughs> well, when they started, they were not very good. And okay. They, they had hired a coach, and it, it takes time to... Yeah, it college. sounds like it. Yeah. But I have to tell you what was interesting about it. I just saw two guys sitting there, and I didn't even think to, I don't even look at them. I just say hi when I sit down and sure. take my cards. Let's go to work. But right maybe seven feet away from us were these two men who had arms like this. Oh. And they were standing in the doorway doing this, <laughs> and they had on white shirts, very crisp, and black pants. All right. And they just kept looking at our table. And so I started paying more attention to them than what I was doing. And then I looked at these guys, and I didn't recognize Warren Buffett at all. All right. But I, Bill Gates was online. Oh, Buffett, funny. Or I've seen him enough on TV and whatever. Yeah. That I knew who it was. But <laughs> their bodyguards are watching them. Oh, that's funny. I probably couldn't beat him today, but I did years ago. Back then? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they, they've continued. Oh, that's to funny. You're going to need oh. bigger bodyguards to beat me at bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it was so obvious. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to hire bodyguards, wouldn't you have them not be quite so obvious? Uh, I suppose, yeah. Arguments either way, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't need a bodyguard. Yeah. But I have to tell you, oh, probably 25 or 30 years ago, I don't even remember, we went to a tournament, and long rows, maybe 15 tables long. Wow. I could see down at the end of this row, people were sitting there watching, and they're called kibitzers. And there must have been eight or ten chairs surrounding this table, kibitzing. And I thought, who on earth could be that important? Yeah. I got down there. It was Omar Sharif. Okay. And when he looked up at me and smiled, my heart just melted. I mean, he was a heartthrob of a movie star. Oh, funny. Anyway. <laughs> but here he was, playing bridge. And he had so much charisma. It was incredible. Nice. And then, I don't know if you've ever heard of Barry Crane. Can't say it, I have. You're probably too young, but he had three or four TV shows, and the most popular one was Get Smart. Okay. He produced those. All right. And he was bludgeoned to death but, uh, by an ex-lover. But I did play against him. Oh, really? Yeah. And so you've been sure. around. Well, look playing how old bridge. I am. <laughs> I mean, well, playing bridge for a connector like that, that's pretty cool. Well, I, I told somebody, I don't know who, that I really think bridge is almost an international language. All right. Because 
I've played bridge in so many different countries mm -hmm. and had friends. They were nice, they were kind, they were helpful. And I hope that when they come to this country, we're the same. Yeah. So is bridge as big in other places around the world? Oh, it's bigger in China than it is in the States. In China? Oh, well, everything they do is big. All right. But, all right, we have three nationals a no, year. Yeah. And the last time it was in Chicago, I was in charge of one of the programs. I was amazed. China, and I, I don't remember the number of the plane, but those, the, the big planes that have hold 500 people or something, mm -hmm. they sent a plane load of Chinese children to Chicago for five days to play bridge. Wow. How young are the children? Well, the youngest life master ever is, I think, eight. Eight? But no, most of those kids were like junior high schoolers. Oh, well, that's still young. Well, China wants to win everything. All right. So they're preparing them to become bridge champions. Wow. But that's the only country I know of that's ever All right. chartered a plane just to transport kids there. That, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty bold. The, the organization that you were talking about in Memphis, mm -hmm. does that keep track of worldwide or is that just keeping track of national? Um, there's a different organization called the World Bridge Federation. All right, of course. <laughs> of course. And they make rules that all countries, not, they don't, they make rules that all countries should follow. Okay. Now, the United States is the only country, though, in the World Bridge Federation that allows us at one time, like we're playing four hearts and you show out on the third heart. I can say to you, you have no more hearts, partner. And, oh. And that saves revoke. So revoke is when you have a card you should have played and you didn't. And okay. there's penalties for that. So the World Bridge Federation, um, I even played in one in Montreal 25 years ago. Friend asked me to go play, oh, and at first day they cut the field in half. Mm -hmm. The next day they cut the field in half again. All right. And finally, he and I made it to the finals of the World Bridge competition. Oh, impressive! All right. Well, I had never played the screens before, and screens are maybe two and a half, three feet wide, and probably four feet tall and the screen goes across the table this way. Okay. So I can't see my partner, and you can't see your partner, but you take your bids out of the bidding box, and you put them under the screen. All right. So that, and then you can ask me what his bid meant. Because you yeah. can't ask out loud, because okay. you don't want your partner to know that you have a question about All it. All right. So anyway, playing with screens in high-level competition is a very common thing. Oh, interesting. Because I suppose people have little signals or whatever, oh, or? they do. Okay. They do. <laughs> oh, that's impressive. <laughs> uh, two people just recently admitted to cheating. Oh. And she has a past president of ACBL. She's beautiful, wealthy, mm -hmm. a fantastic bridge player, a gourmet cook. All right. And she was being inducted into the Bridge Hall of Fame. And she admitted she cheated. Oh, wow. She's lost everything. Oh, no. Well, excuse I suppose, me. I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah. So is she, it, are they just it, blinking it, or moving their hands on the table? Oh, I don't know. Husband and wife, and he wasn't good enough for her, so they started cheating so they could win more. Gotcha. Okay. No, I just, I don't think there's room for cheating. This is a game. Right. And you want to win the game on your skill. So, hold on a second. You, when you're playing bridge, I guess I always assumed it was just an individual and you got put at a table with three other people, but it's you and a partner, and you and that partner move. move. Oh, 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 okay. So if you sign up to play bridge with me, it's for three and a half hours and it's 27 boards usually. All right. So you and me were hitting the tables. That's All right. right. Got it. Okay. So it's not so much individual. So you, I imagine at one point you just subconsciously pick up on nuances of your bridge partner. Uh, I think married couples do that more probably than okay. single people because they know each other so well they sure. can't help but pick up on things. Uh, but the, one of the rules at Bridge is when I make a bid, I'm not supposed to be looking at you. Oh. I, All right. I can't 
sometimes a person will put down a bid and their partner will go, oh. <laughs> they do. All right, I bet. I, I'm, I'm sure I've done it myself. Yeah. Because you just think, oh my gosh, what's going on? Yeah. And you're not really supposed to show any of those emotions. Oh, you're supposed to be just poker faced. Mm -hmm. All right, look away. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. And you're not supposed to stare at the opponent. You're sitting there looking at your hand, and I'm not supposed to sit here and stare right. at you. Just intimidate them into right. bidding low or something? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's it's the same sort of a gentleman's game as golf. All right. Or tennis. Okay. We have rules. Mm -hmm. We're expected to follow them. All right. Makes sense. So with Bridge, I guess, and all the people, where do you see Bridge going in the next 10, 20, 30 years? Do you think it'll get bigger? Do you think it'll just maintain? Or? Well, it's kind of a two-sided question because more and more young people are not playing. All right. Uh, Thoreau School offered me to come in and do a enrichment class for mm -hmm. eighth grade math students or seventh yeah. grade math students, whatever it was, for bridge. And the reason I told her that I would do it is because for children, it teaches them concentration skills. Mm -hmm. It teaches them uh, inductive, deductive reasoning. It teaches them that negative inferences sometimes are more powerful than positive inferences. You mm -hmm. have to look at both sides. Mm -hmm. So I told her that it would greatly improve math. Well, she promoted it, she topped it up, and only three students signed up. Oh, no. So she canceled it. but. What we decided was if you had somebody in your family, a grandparent or an aunt or somebody who played, you might be interested in learning. But if mm -hmm. you've never heard of bridge, you think, right. who wants to take an enrichment class in a card game right. kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that as we continue to grow, it's always going to be more of the senior citizen type people or the newly retired. Okay. I had a class of newly retired, and they were hilarious. I mean. <laughs> Talk about having worked too hard her whole life. She was taking art lessons in the morning, and then she was coming here for a class, and then she was going to one of the golf courses for a putting lesson. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it was like that was her day every day. She just was doing everything she could think of. Never bored. All right. Well, I think I think when she worked, she must have thought someday I'm going to do this and that. And mm -hmm. so she was trying everything out to see what she wanted to do. All right. So no I, I, I just don't know what the future holds. Okay. What are the plans for you with the business? Well, I'm going to continue running it as mm -hmm. long as I can. Okay. Obviously, as I age, I need more and more help. Sure. Because I can't do some of the physical things I used to be able to do. Okay. Um, but I'm going to keep it until there is no more me. <laughs> All right. I, I love it here. Mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning and I making treats to bring if I'm directing it or I'm, this morning I answered four or five emails, people wanting to know more about Bridge. Yeah. It, it gives me, I mean, I, I love my children and my family dearly, but mm -hmm. I, I used to have golf and tennis. Now I have my grandchildren in Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I still garden all the Tell me, you used to have a newspaper column. Uh -huh. Tell me about that. Oh, I wish I could think of the man's name. He was the a person who wrote about the operas and the plays, and uh, someday I'll have to, I'll, I may have it or not. Right. Anyway, he called me up one day, and he said, Glenna, this is so-and-so, and I hear that you're a very good bridge player. I was wondering if I could interest you in writing a column. And I said, writing a column? I mean, I'm not a writer. And I told him that. And he said, well, come in and talk with me. So I went over there, and I agreed I would try it. Mm -hmm. And so I did it for a year. All right. And every day or week or? Every week. Okay. Once a week. But, you know, when you have three children and a busy life mm -hmm. and all the other things I was doing, and I'm a big volunteer at Angels, and I was a volunteer at oh, high school for all my kids, um, I just didn't have time. It, mm -hmm. I, I, I use too many words for everything I do. All right. So I would write the column and let it sit there and then I'd go back and rewrite it practically but take out 30 words and then the next day or two I'd reread it and take out 12 more words mm -hmm. and it, it's very time consuming to write one article this big mm -hmm. <laughs> to spend that much time on it. So I enjoyed it and I had people writing me and calling me they were interested in bridge. Oh fun. But um, you need somebody who likes to write. 
There's that. Yeah, that's fair. So, um, I I know that I talk too much. <laughs> I do. We had a podcast, so that's ideal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. It seems like I do talk often. Oh, uh, so well, I imagine when it's something social like this, I can't imagine an introverted person running a show like this. Oh, really? No, because I would think that a big portion of the reason people come here is to meet like-minded people. People that are, I don't know, there has to be a certain level of intellect to play the game alone at all. So right there you're like, okay, everyone that's in this room is at least this smart. Whether that's, I mean, paper to justify it or prove it or not, doesn't matter, they have the ability. And that alone, you're like, okay, well, these are cool people because of that. That's true. And then you play the game, it's fun, but yeah, there's got to be camaraderie in it. I would imagine that the person running that has to have something to, uh, I suppose, help extract that out of people, because there's probably some introverts that walk through the door. Oh, yes, yes. And then after a few hands, maybe they open up a little bit. They do. I, I have to say, I am genuinely happy to see people walk in that door. I bet. And I think when you're genuinely happy, they realize that. Mm -hmm. So I have people who walk in this club and walk up to me and hug me or... <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know, they do. Or yeah. They walk out and they say thank you and mm -hmm. they'll bring treats and say, here, I want to share this with you. Oh, well, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's it's really a family or a community. I yeah. Think. And I hope everybody who comes here feels that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think that... I don't know. I, I see stuff like this and the reason that I got into chess is because I needed to exercise my brain in different ways than I do with the typical job. Okay. You just want to, I feel like your brain or your body is a use it or lose it kind of thing. Oh, but you, most people don't realize that about their brain. Mm -hmm. I am just fascinated with people who, I have a lady who comes here and she's always bored. Okay. She, she never has anything pleasant or happy to say. She's just oh, no. very down. And I really have worked on her trying to get her to come around. And she actually paid me a compliment last week. I know she didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> it was an accident. I didn't mean to say that. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but I figure we're all going through life the very best we can. Right. And it takes nothing to be kind. Mm -hmm. So why not try it? Right? Yeah. There's no instruction manual or anything. But no. But interesting. But well, she's still playing bridge. And is she having a good time with her partner? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> or maybe vice versa, her partner is like, okay. <laughs> All right, no worries, no worries. I mean, I imagine that's the, there's definitely a social dynamic. There with, is. With any game where you're sitting at a table, especially with four people like that. Well, and we play tough. against them three times a week. Yeah. You kind of know where they're going on vacation and how right. their grandkids are. And her daughter just had twins. And I mean, you just know oh, all this stuff. Yeah. That is cool. And I have to even take it a step farther. Yeah. I'm sure you live in some prairie, won't know this, but this is not a desirable neighborhood. It used to be. I, you know, I was going to ask you about that. Because 30 years, that building wasn't there. The huge right. power lines weren't there. Right. I mean, it's a different world. Well, when we first moved to Madison, we lived in Arbor Hills. Mm -hmm. And it was a nice neighborhood, and I think it still is. But all of this area back here is no longer nice. You mm -hmm. have four families living in one apartment building over there in the corner. Oh. And lots of drug deals. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be here during the pandemic to come over and run water and do things. Mm -hmm. And you could see the drug deals going on over at the laundromat. Oh, no. I would have a furnace guy say, oh, Glenna, they were selling drugs at 6.30 this morning, that kind of thing. So uh, I was very sad when I came here one day and there was like a dozen eggs broken on the parking lot and a dozen bottles of beer. I came over here Sunday to work and there were two beer bottles out on the parking lot. I had to clean up. Mm -hmm. So what I've done, and I'm out there pulling weeds and people walk by. I talk to them. All right. And I say hi to them. Yeah. And I've got about four people now who really, they like this club. Mm -hmm. they, they come over. I've told them all. They have my permission to cut all the flowers they want. And oh, nice. a lady stopped Sunday and told me she lost her son two months ago at age 27. Oh, are you kidding? And she said, I, I come over here and just look at these flowers. And I said, well, please cut some. And they come over. She said, I'll buy a vase tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
it's I'm not going to sell this building. It's, All right. it's too close to the belt line. Yeah, you were right there. I have people who drive here every week from Sun Prairie. All right. To play. Okay. I have people who come in from Verona. All right. From Mount Horb. Mm -hmm. I have a guy who's started coming from Blanchardville. Also a hike, all right. Yeah, but you know, they're coming. Yeah, that's the name of the game. And if you can feel, I don't know what word to use maybe, but you feel like you're having a positive influence mm -hmm. on people, mm -hmm. it's a good feeling. Making the world a little bit better place. Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. So that's why I'm going to keep it. All right. Yeah, this is, it's interesting because I guess when I was in the parking lot, you look down there and you're, it's um, completely the opposite of looking north, I suppose it would be. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Good or bad? I mean, cities evolve, or neighborhoods evolve, I guess. Well, and I complained of the swimming pool when they talking to this guy, and then he finally told me he's a plain clothes policeman. Okay. Oh, funny. <laughs> There's so many drug deals going on around my place. What do I do about that as a private citizen? He said, I'll take care of it. So I occasionally will drive by or come over here, and there's an unmarked car just parked in my parking lot. All right. And they're watching my neighborhood. All right. Well, that's a big job. It is. But I figure they probably have a pretty good handle on what's going on in the neighborhood now. Yeah, I imagine. You hope so, anyways. Well, it gives yeah. me a little peace of mind. Right, right. Everybody's got their routine, so even drug dealers. <laughs> True. So, yeah, interesting. So, you have a cool place here. I'm impressed. Well, thank you. And I'm, I feel like you're making the world a better place, which is cool, with, with Bridge. And anytime I hear about the Warren Buffetts or the Bill Gates of the world, I remember Warren Buffetts, um, I don't know if it was biography or autobiography. Bridge sticks out because it was mentioned, I don't want to say almost as much as stock picking. Yes. <laughs> in that book, which I told you, it's addicting. Yeah. People don't realize that. They say, oh, it's a game. Mm -hmm. But people are addicted to gambling, too. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. They keep putting them up. So. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And I think the, th the thing about Ridges is the same way with golf. You know, you have a bad shot or a bad hole of golf, you think, well, tomorrow when I play, I'm, I'll do better here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing with bridge. Yeah. Oh, today I was average, but if we'd just done two boards better, we could have won, that kind of thing. Right. And you get into that mentality. What did you learn? What did you learn? What yeah. did you learn? Uh -huh. Always be improving. That's uh -huh. cool. I, so, I, is your name on the board there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you, where are you at? Dickie well, was I... I became a life master in the 80s. Holy cow, that's awesome. So, yeah, I'm up there. That's awesome. I have 7,000 master points. Is that, relatively speaking, that seems like a lot to me. It so is. is that, okay. <laughs> that's cool. Do you play bridge every day when you're here? No, some days I direct. Okay, all right. And if someone comes without a partner, I will play with them if I need to. All right. But most people come with partners. But after, since the pandemic, there's been like three or four. Like the guy who came in from Blanchardville came by himself. He said, I, I used to play bridge, and I'm retired. And All right. we welcomed him with open arms. Nice. I feel like I would want to come here alone just so you could be my partner. Oh. <laughs> I have no. a man who did that. All right. <laughs> no, I'm going to win here. Wrong. <laughs> Didn't work out so hot? Oh, he, somebody else came without a partner. Oh, gotcha. He's like, <laughs> ah, foiled again. Well, he did ask me if we could play some time. But I have to be honest, I, I have maybe three partners I play with the most often. Okay. And then that, those are the people I go to tournaments with. Yeah. You see, there's club games. Mm -hmm. Then there's sectionals, which are like we're having a sectional here in December. Here? In, in this building. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Congrats. And, uh. Then there's regionals, which are a step higher, and then the nationals. So you can do any of those things, but when you go to tournaments and compete and pay $36 for the day to play bridge, you want to play with somebody who you're in tune with right. and can be good competition for Got the it. field. Mm -hmm. So somebody who has not very many points asked me to go with him to play in a tournament. And I 
run them down as nicely as I could. I said, you know, it would be a waste of your money because right. you would have to play in fly day with me. We have three flights, A, B, and C, mm -hmm. and you play in those flights according to how many master points you have. Oh, gotcha. So he has 30 master points, and he'd have to play with me in flight A. Right. And in flight A, you have bridge pros in there and people who are a lot better than I am. Sure. Oh, and, darn. And so I tried to explain that to him, and he just sort of shook his head, yes, I don't think he believed me. All right. But I was being honest with him. Gotcha. People with 50 master points think, oh, boy, I, I'm winning at bridge. I'm pretty good. No, got the world figured out. <laughs> but then when they get to about 300, they realize they still don't know it all. Uh. <laughs> so there's that learning curve. Where all right. You have to have a certain amount of self-confidence mm -hmm. or you wouldn't come here and expose yourself to the likely to be coming in in this place. All right. And I suppose you don't want to let down your partner, especially no. if it's a person that you maybe just met that night or day. Right, right. No, you, it's competitive and you want to feel like you have a chance to win. Mm -hmm. I like it. Cool. Well, Glenna, thank you so much. This is I cool. Can, I can hardly wait to see what you do with this hodgepodge. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We got, uh, you gave me a lot to work with here with this cool place. So this is impressive. I had no idea what to expect. Yeah, it's interesting. It's just, it's cool because this is a bridge facility, bridge only. You don't see that with chess. You don't see, you don't see that with poker. You don't, like, think of all the card games, board games, everything. We don't see individual buildings with those. We have one for bridge here. So I think that alone speaks volumes. Uh, just well, people who know me well would tell you that I, I kind of either do it all or I don't do it all. <laughs>